my brothers and sisters <coughs> we know of many prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm sure we know many of the names of a lot of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the exact number of prophets we don't know we were not told so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says from among them he gave some of the stories to us some of them he didn't and in the Quran, he has made mention of stories of some who were not even prophets because of the value of the statement and the speech that perhaps they had stated or because of the lesson derived from their life or from something that happened. An example of this is Luqman. Luqman was not a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah's peace be upon him too. He was an African from Africa. According to the narrations, he was from Sudan what is known as a Noba. And he was a very wise man. He was known as Al-Hakim, the wise. There is an entire surah named after this man, even though according to the most correct opinion, he was not a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But his advice to his son is what held value, such that in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah chose to make mention of it in the Quran. Now, the point I want to raise is my brothers and sisters, if you speak good, do you know that Allah speaks about you to the angels? If you encourage people to do good, Allah talks about you. If you gather people and you actually are encouraging them regarding the word of Allah, the hadith says Allah makes mention of this gathering with the angels. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally boasts to the angels to say, look at my worshippers. They are worshipping me against the shaitan and shaitan's promise they have defied the devil they have come and they have actually worshipped me they are encouraging one another to come closer to me so my brothers and sisters don't think for a moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware for indeed not only is he aware but he even mentions us he knows everyone by name he knows everyone absolutely personally he knows more about me than I know about myself may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on every one of us we started yesterday making mention of Luqman and what he had said to his son the first point he makes mention of Ya bunayya la tushrik billahi inna shirka la dhulmun azim. O my son, do not associate partners with Allah. For indeed associating partners with Allah is the great transgression, the great oppression. It is totally wrong. That's the first piece of advice. So we save ourselves from calamity and disaster by worshipping Allah alone and by protecting ourselves from association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Thereafter, I spoke at length yesterday about the parents and how important it is for us to respect our parents no matter what. Today, I want to continue with some of that advice of Luqman, Al-Hakim, the wise. He says, oh my son, fulfill and establish your prayer. At that time, the prayer was not like ours five times a day. It was different, but there was a, an injunction regarding prayer there was an obligation regarding prayer he says ya bunayya aqimis salata oh my son fulfill your prayer why because you will save yourself from the calamities you become closer to allah your maker you know today we are seated here mashallah it's a very cold evening here in cape town and you know the rains and the winds that have been subhanallah persistent for the last perhaps 10 days and you know how it feels, how difficult it is. We come, we warm ourselves. We make a plan, we arrive. We'd like, subhanallah, the temperature in the masjid to be good. Do you know one day you will not exist anymore on earth? One day, all your clothing and everything you have and whatever you are worth will actually be zero except your deeds that you have done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all, whether you like it or not, we are all going to cross over into the hereafter. Even those who don't believe in the hereafter, they have to cross over, whether they like it or not, into the hereafter. Subhanallah. It's something amazing because they will not even be able to tell you where they go. At least with us, we know. We are convinced where we are going to go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us to a better place. So you want to prepare for that day. Be a better person. 
Improve your link with Allah. Start off with your five daily salah. In our case, there are five salah. Come on, you can do better. My brothers and sisters, save yourselves. We are struggling on earth. I'm sure we can do better regarding these five daily prayers. My brothers and sisters, enough is enough. We are suffering so much on the earth. Each one of us individually, we have problems. Start off with your salah. Start off with your salah. Look at Luqman. Allah makes mention of him. He's encouraging his son. Oh, my son, fulfill your salah. It has to have been something absolutely important. So this is a very important point. Then he says, وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Encourage people to do good. Encourage them to do good. Discourage them from bad in a beautiful way. When you are encouraging people, don't insult them. Don't swear them. Don't belittle them. Encourage them in a lovely way. When you want someone to do good, whether it's your children or anyone in society or community or anyone anywhere across the globe, if you are to choose a beautiful way of communicating with them, the chances of them listening to you are far greater than if you were to insult or if you were to be disrespectful or even just abrupt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to use good words to encourage people because people generally have within them the capacity to be good and they are very receptive to a good method and a smile on the face. This is why it's important for us to use that which Allah has bestowed upon us in terms of the methods of communication so that we can actually get the message of Allah more importantly to everyone else and ourselves included. Then when we discourage people from bad, again, do not belittle, do not insult, do not curse. Choose the prophetic way. Someone is doing something bad. You need to be so concerned about them that when you speak to them, you need to think within yourself, I hope I don't make them worse. Sometimes the way we communicate with people, we make them worse. We drive them further away from the masjid. I recall once there was a youngster who walked into the masjid after a long, long pause. And he had a, a t-shirt which had at the back a picture of some pop star. And he walked into the masjid and people knew that this youngster has not been in the masjid for a long time. And one brother actually insulted him and told him, get lost, get out of the masjid. You don't understand. This is very bad. How could you wear this? How could you do that? And you know what? I noticed an elderly man who went to the back of the masjid and this youngster was shocked. He wanted to get up and punch someone. But the elderly man said, son, come here. You know, there are jackets at the back. He got a little jacket, a coat. He said, don't worry, ignore him. He doesn't know. Just wear this, fulfill your prayer. Subhanallah. Look at the elderly. Look at how wise they are. The one was driving and this man was a religious man, but he didn't have wisdom. He was driving the young boy out of the masjid. You can solve the problem. It is not difficult. Subhanallah. You can resolve it very easily. Give him your own jacket to wear or at least explain to him the next time when he comes, he'll feel welcome. Subhanallah. A man came and peed in the masjid. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was present. You know what? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not rebuke him and told the people, don't rebuke him. If they rebuked him, he may never have come to the masjid again. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So this is something we learn from the story of Luqman. Wasbir ala ma asabak. The third thing, the fourth thing, be patient regarding that which has hit you, that which has come in your direction. Be patient regarding that. All of us, we will have calamity, disaster, difficulty, hardship, any form of adversity. Be patient. Sabr is the key, the key to the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this. Because Allah is the one who decides and decrees. When you are happy with the decree of Allah, it's known as a rida bil qada. To be happy with that which Allah has decided. It's a very, very high level of belief, yaqeen, conviction, and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'd like to move further. Subhanallah. He teaches his son how to treat people. We spoke about respect yesterday, but the verse, verse number 18 of the surah, number 31 of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Luqman tells his son, وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا Don't turn your cheek against the people in arrogance and haughtiness and don't walk with pride on earth. He's telling his son, Allah loved that advice so much that it's, re it's read in the Quran, in the word of Allah. Allah spoke these words, subhanallah. That's how much Allah loved this advice. So let's learn to advise one another so perhaps Allah can love our words too. Obviously the Quran is, is, is revealed already. 
It's already sealed and complete, but at least we can earn the love of Allah by saying good words. If Allah loved these words so much when that man advised his son, what about us advising one another and our own children? Then he says, Oh my son, Oh my son, when you walk, walk with humbleness, humility. Make sure that you don't walk in such a way that you give the idea and impression to people that you are haughty, you are arrogant, you are bigger than them. No, you are just a number like everybody else. You are just like everyone else. The day that Allah gives you your book in your right hand, that is the day you can consider yourself successful. Up to that day, you ought to be worried. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah grant us ease. Then he says, oh my son, lower your voice. When you speak, no need to scream and yell, no need to shout, no need to raise your voice such that you sound like a donkey. The, the, you know what the hadith, you know what the verse says? The worst sound is that of a braying ass, a braying donkey. Why? It makes a noise. It's loud. Nobody hears. It disturbs. It is irritating. That's how some people operate. They talk loud. They scream. They irritate. No one understands what they're saying. The Quran says the worst sound is this. You are supposed to lower your voice, speak nicely, respectfully with the people, no matter what you'd like to say. Anyway, that is as far as I'm going to speak about Surah Luqman. And I, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to save ourselves from the difficulties, calamities within society, community, and even in our social living. Look at the advice of Luqman. It encompassed worshipping Allah then the parents, and then general advice regarding everyone else. Threefold. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us acknowledge this and learn from it. Amen. We have another beautiful surah, surah sajda, number 32 of the Quran. Surah number 32. That surah is read and repeated by us. I'm sure a lot of us, you know, in Salatul Fajr on a Friday, a lot of the time the Imam, because of the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, he may just start off Alif Lam Mim. And you know now he's going to lengthen it a bit because this is a Sunnah. It is Surah Sajda. But what is it in the Surah? My brothers and sisters, there is a lot in the Surah. But it is named after the prostration. The prostration, those who truly believe, and this is in verse number 15 of that surah, those who truly believe, whenever they are reminded of the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they fall prostrate. Some people, when we are reminded of Allah, we get angry, we get upset, we go further away. Save yourselves. Someone is sent to you by Allah. They may not have chosen the best method because perhaps they are human beings, but if what they are saying is correct, soften up. Allah loves those who soften up. So Allah says, the true believers are those whom, when they are reminded of the verses of Allah, they drop in prostration. And in the next verse, Allah says, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا At night, their sides forsake their beddings because they are calling out to Allah in hope and fear. How many of us call out to Allah? We forsake our bedding, sit up in your bedding and cry out to Allah, Oh Allah, I'm in need. I need you, Ya Allah. We're talking here of dua, supplication. You know, people say, okay, I don't know. It's time of tahajjud. I might not be able to get up. I might be lazy. I might be this. My brothers and sisters, when a third of the night remains, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven calling out, is there anyone who wants anything that I can give them? You know what? A lot of us are just sleeping. Set your clock for the time. No one said you have to read Salat al-Tahajjud. You can get up and make a dua. Just at least call out to Allah. This Allah says, يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا These people call out to Allah. When in the darkness of the night, they make sure that their sides have forsaken the beddings. How many of us are ready to do this? Yet we are in need. We are desperate. Every one of us here and all those listening and all those viewing and whoever may see this ever again, we are all in desperate need of the mercy of Allah. Ask him for it. May Allah have mercy on us. May Allah forgive us. May Allah help us all in the difficulties and challenges that we are going through in our lives. Amen. 
my brothers and sisters, what a great creator of ours. What a merciful Lord. He is telling us, call out to me, I'll give it to you. The difficulty is we don't. Imagine when you're sitting on a table and you need, for example, the ketchup that is on the other side of the table and you're just sitting looking at everyone on the table and looking there, expecting people to understand that, you know what, this is supposed to come here. Subhanallah. You're just looking at it. It's not going to suddenly come up and get there. You know, the mercy of Allah can do miracles for you. Yes, indeed. But in the same way, you know, you've got to ask for what you want. Allah has kept it an act of worship to ask him what you want, even though he knows what you want. Because he wants you to soften up, to admit that he is the king. He is the Lord. He is the owner. He owns you. So when you ask him, you are acknowledging you are nothing. He is the Lord. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand his greatness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next surah, which is surah al-Ahzab, a very, very beautiful, powerful surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commences this surah, surah number 33 of this beautiful Quran by making mention of several matters. One of them, Allah says, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلٍ مِّن قَلْبَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِهِ Allah has not created any man with two hearts in his throat or in his chest, the upper part of his chest. Allah has not created two hearts in a person. Now one might ask, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal this? Sometimes, you know, my brothers and sisters, a dual role that a person plays Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing our attention to the fact that hang on, there is one thing that Allah has created you by and for. Remember at that time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taken a young man known as Zayd ibn Haritha radiyallahu anhu who was given to him by his wife as a slave but he freed him and he used to be called Zayd ibn Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah wanted to clarify that, hang on, don't hide this lineage and don't let it be a means of deception. Just be clear. This is Zayd ibn Haritha. This is Zayd, son of Haritha. Don't let them say Zayd bin Muhammad because that is confusing. And it is wrong in the eyes of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there cannot be two lineages with one man. You cannot have both. The correct one is Zayd ibn Haritha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter in the next verse, verse number five, Allah says, Udu'uhum li aba'ihim huwa aqsatu inda Allah. Call them with their father's names. That is justice in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there is another matter addressed here as well. And that is the difficulty where people were telling their wives when they were not interested anymore in fulfilling the rights of their elderly wives or those perhaps who may have become a little bit older, etc. They used to say, you know what, you are just like my mother. And when they say you are just like my mother, the idea was to stay away from them, to say now you can just look after the kids. As for the fulfillment of your rights and you know the, the intimate rights and so on, that's okay, it's fine. Allah says, how dare you say this? This is prohibited, it is wrong, and it could be equivalent to divorce if you're not careful. You cannot equate your wife with someone who's a mahram. You cannot do that with the intention of insulting her and telling her that I'm no longer going to fulfill your rights and your duties. Let's save ourselves from insulting our wives. They have given birth. They have borne our children. We need to respect and honor the changes that may have taken place in their bodies as a result. It has to happen. It's a test for you. The time you married her, she might have been, subhanallah, you know, in prim prop shape. I'm not saying that women should allow themselves to, you know, to, to waste themselves without even being concerned about what they look like. No, but I am saying that sometimes we as men do not appreciate what they've been through for us. And we just say words that are so hurtful, yet they have sacrificed for us, wallahi. That is your wife, that is the mother of your children. Be careful how you speak to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا جَعَلَ أَزْوَاجَكُمُ اللَّائِي تُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْهُنَّ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ Allah says, those women whom you call your mothers and you are engaged in something known as dhihar. Dhihar is to assimilate your wife to your mother. They are not your mothers. How dare you say that? Allah warns the men, watch out. 
Watch these statements. Be careful. Honor the woman. She has taken care of your, your children. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to save ourselves and our homes from disaster because of the bad tongue we have sometimes. Subhanallah. And I've heard some really nasty words. Some good people, you can't believe. The man is fulfilling salah. He's a decent person. But listen to what he says to his wife. Listen to how he treats his children, his mother, etc. Wallahi, it's unacceptable. If you don't have anything good to say, remain silent. But if you are a husband, create good words to say to your spouse. Because if you don't say them, where do you expect her to get those words from? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. So my brothers and sisters, that is a very, very interesting point. The point of naming the children, it's important for us to realize that we are not allowed to hide lineage because that is sacred, it's chosen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's important for us also to realize that we need to be careful the way we address our wives. In that way, we will be able to live in harmony and peace and alhamdulillah, the mercy of Allah will descend upon us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us forgiveness for what we may have said in the past. Make amends. Make amends. Never lose hope. Admit your error. You were wrong. Say so. And tell yourself, I'm not going to do this again. Go back home. Look at the mother of your children. And feel within your heart that connection. And say to yourself, you know what? This is a human being. This is somebody's daughter. This is somebody's child. I need definitely to appreciate and acknowledge that I'm going to die. I may die anytime now. I'd rather die having pleased Allah regarding one of his beloved creatures whom destiny had brought me together with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Let's move on. The same surah Allah says again regarding the favors of Allah. Regarding the favors of Allah. Verse number 9. Ya alaykum. This was speaking about the favors of Allah when Allah protected the believers from the enemy. But I want to take it further and tell you so many places in the Quran, Allah says, O you who believe, remember the favors of Allah upon you. Allah has bestowed upon you favor upon favor. Remember, by sitting and thinking of the favors of Allah, you are actually engaged in an act of worship. Did you know that? When you sit and you think, what has Allah given me? Okay, he gave me eyes, he gave me a nose, he gave me this, he gave me that. When you sit and think about what Allah has given you, subhanAllah, the food we have, even if it's dates, more or less, look at what others do not have. These are the favors of Allah. Sit and thank Allah. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, udhkuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum. Remember the favors of Allah upon you. He has bestowed upon you so much. No matter who you are, you may have less, but you are favored by Allah. You may have more, you are favored by Allah. Remember the favors. And when you remember the favors of Allah, they should draw you closer to Allah. Your love of Allah should increase. So a sign of gratitude to Allah for the favors he has bestowed upon me is that now my salah falls in place. I stay away from sin. My zakah falls in place. The way I treat the rest, the rest of the creatures of the same Allah happens to be much better than before because obviously I'm now conscious that Allah has favored me. Subhanallah. What has Allah not given you? Allah has given you so much. We as humankind have a sickness. We only look at what we don't have and we become depressed because of that. And there are millions of other things we have. We don't even consider them. So Allah reminds us, save yourselves from that depression. Stop thinking only about what we have not given you. Think about what we gave you, not what we did not give you. If you were to draw a list, what we did not give you, 10 things. And what we gave you, a million things. If you are definitely going to try and count the favors of Allah upon you, you will never ever be able to count them all. You won't. Subhanallah. So that is a gift of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, there is mention made of the beloved gift that we have. What is the biggest gift that you and I have? It is the fact that we have Iman and belief and we are followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the best gift we have. We have Iman, belief. What we have is La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. That is the ultimate gift. Verse number 21, Surah Al-Ahzab, which is Surah 33, Allah says, 
لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا Indeed, there is a beautiful example in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for you to emulate for those who remember Allah a lot and those who are looking forward for the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his entire life was a blessing. His entire life is to be celebrated by us. We follow him to the T. And subhanallah, that is a gift. Allah says, look, we have given you a gift. What is that gift? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow him. Follow his path. Follow his ways. Follow his habits. And you will never go wrong. Whether it is in your health, whether it is in your social life, spiritual, religious, your relation with Allah, your relation with whatever and whoever, it can never go wrong. Subhanallah. But I think a lot of us take this for granted. When it comes to the celebrities and the pop stars of the dunya, we are quick to emulate them, to follow them, to wear t-shirts depicting who we are and what we follow. But when it comes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it takes a long time before we can even look a little bit like what we have learned he looked like. Subhanallah. I like to give an example of the footballers. The minute they cut their hair in a certain way, a lot of our kids cutting their hair in the same way. They're not worried whether it looks like a baboon or whether it looks like something else. They're not worried. It becomes a new hairstyle. Why? Because my man did it. I don't want to even comment about that. Whether it's right or wrong, you would know. But the point I want to raise is when we want to do something that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought, why do we find it so difficult? I mean, when we are resurrected, where do you want to be resurrected? Subhanallah. Ask yourself, which, where do you want to actually be resurrected if you were to die right now? Who would you like to be with? It's quite simple. Al mar'u ma'aman ahab. The, the hadith says clearly, a man will be resurrected with whom he loves. That's it, with whom he follows. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. And may we be saved on that day from the calamities and the disasters. Amen. My brothers and sisters, then we have a verse that we read tonight regarding the choice. A true believer, those who have claimed to believe, they need to save themselves from disbelief. We were free to enter Islam. We entered the fold of Islam, which means we declared that we believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger. Once that happens, it means whatever he says, we will follow. That's what a Muslim is. If you don't want to follow, why call yourself a Muslim? That's the point. If you don't want to follow, why call yourself a Muslim? If you are calling yourself a Muslim, be honest about it and follow Islam. What does Islam say? Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verse number 36 of Surah Al-Ahzab. وَمَا كَانَ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَن يَكُونَ لَهُمُ أَن لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ it is not befitting for a true believing male or female that when Allah or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have declared something that they then feel that they have a choice in that regard. Subhanallah. If Allah has declared something, a true believer says, Sami'na wa ata'na. We have heard, we have obeyed. If Allah's messenger has declared something, a true believer says, we have heard, we have obeyed. But those who don't believe truly, they feel, nah, you know what? There's something wrong here. I don't think so that this is actually the way it should be. Why excuses? If you haven't understood something, go and learn it. But don't come and say something against Allah and His Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when there is clear-cut instruction. May Allah forgive us. May Allah strengthen us. May Allah guide us. May Allah educate us. May we be from among those who make an effort to learn. For indeed, when you learn, you will be able to get closer to Allah. Inna yakhsha Allah min ibadihi ulama. Indeed, those who are truly fearful of Allah are those who have knowledge of who Allah is. If you don't know who Allah is, how are you going to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So let's inshallah increase that knowledge of ours. So these are just some of the verses that we recited tonight. And inshallah tomorrow we will continue with more of these verses. But my brothers and sisters, before I end, one quick point. Do you realize that there are only a few more days left for the month of Ramadan? Do you realize that we are almost about to begin the last 10 nights? Do you realize that? 
Wallahi, it has gone by quicker than before. Every year, it seems like the Ramadan becomes faster and faster. My brothers and sisters, advice for myself and for everyone else, please don't waste the next 10 nights of Ramadan or the 12, 15, 14 nights that are remaining, less than that in fact. Let us not waste them. Let us take it seriously. The Prophet Sallallahu himself being the best of creation, the most noble of all messengers, subhanallah, the last 10 nights, the hadith says, he used to take them very, very seriously. Subhanallah. He used to liven the night because he used to know, hey, this is a sale, subhanallah. All the deeds and everything are on sale, literally. Allah is giving away his mercy. Earn it, my brothers and sisters. Let's not waste the last 10 nights. Let's take it seriously. It will be a little bit tough, subhanallah. You know, long nights, mashallah, we have in this part of the world. But to get here for salah, to be able to fulfill it, to listen to something that would move us, my brothers and sisters, we need that movement. The forward movement is what we want. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant it us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant.